the new Glock Gen 5. Let's check it out. Now a lot of people seem to be underwhelmed with the changes on the new Glock Gen 5. Uh, what I find funny is, is when the FBI took on the 17M, everybody was like, oh I hope Glock releases that to the public. Um, and then of course with the military trials, which there are a lot of cues from this pistol taken from that, even though it's not quite the same. Uh, you know, everybody was kind of on the bandwagon of let's see what's going on, you know, I'd love to get a hold of one of those. And so I think Glock listened and they've introduced the Gen 5. Uh, this Gen 5 is really close to the FBI contract pistol. In fact, it may be identical. I haven't had one to compare. But there was a lot of excitement and you know what guys, I'm glad they did. Now, are these changes drastic? You know, do we want drastic changes to the design? Or do we want incremental things that just improve? And I mean, there's a lot of things in this pistol that are different. And it's not just the removal of the finger grooves. The new Glock Gen 5, uh, whether you're a Glock lover or you hate them, uh, the Glock Gen 5 is here. And a lot of people have looked at this pistol and, again, have been just underwhelmed. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, big deal. They took off the fingered grooves on the front strap and uh, kind of dismiss it for that. But there are a lot of changes to this pistol that warrant the new Gen 5. I'll tell you, Glock's not going to introduce a, a new generation pistol without making some changes, some significant changes, just like they did from the Gen 3 to the Gen 4. Typically it's about a 10 year period that they introduce new generations, but with this one it's only been seven years. A lot of people were looking at those new FBI pistols and saying, I would love to get my hands on one. And so Glock said, here it is. And first off, I want to thank GunProDeals.com for sending the pistol for this test and evaluation, and I appreciate their sponsorship of the channel. It's great to be able to uh, request different firearms, and they'll get them out to me. It's a great source, great prices. In fact, I purchased this from GunProDeals, and we're going to talk about the reasons why. First thing we want to do is make sure the gun is unloaded, magazine out, and the chamber is clear. One of the things we want to talk about first is the magazine. Uh, this magazine has some different designs to it. Uh, one of the big ones is the orange follower, or one of the most obvious, I should say. And it definitely helps when you're at the range. I mean, you can just look down, you can see the gun is unloaded without too much trouble. Another bonus of the orange follower is you can see the orange through the witness holes. And that way the round counts that much easier. Uh, one other thing is they've changed the geometry of the base plate. It's actually a little longer and it kind of curves up and bevels. Uh, this is going to help when you release your magazines. Now one of the big things also is a beveled mag well, which is very helpful <laughs> getting that mag up there. Uh, one thing too that kind of benefits is that it actually rides out a little bit and it you can feel it on the grip. You don't feel like you're going to slip off. So be honest with you, I really like this magwell. Now, one thing they did was is put a cut right here in the front of the grip. And that's really to facilitate being able to pull these mags. If you have a stoppage, uh, you can get this mag out much easier if you have to. And then, of course, with this back at the back, which that's always been the way Glock has designed it. A lot of gun companies now are making mags where you can pull them out this way. But here, we can get it this way through the Glock. Now, obviously, one of the big changes is the finger groove removal, which most of your guys that are doing a lot of custom work are, were removing these finger grooves already. 
Uh, that's one of the big popular things to do. And so Glock just went ahead and trimmed that up. Now I've heard a lot of guys say, well, just might as well go ahead and just buy a Gen 2 and, you know, it doesn't have the finger grooves. Um, there, there are so many changes to this pistol that that's just ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. But, uh, you know, you have your texturing here that gives it a lot more texturing than, obviously, the Gen 2, Gen 3. Uh, very similar, obviously, to the Gen 4. One really cool thing is you have four different backstrap options other than the small, which the gun just comes as, the small, without a backstrap. Uh, you have a medium large for your beaver tail, or you have medium and large just to expand the back of the grip. And I thought that was a pretty cool addition. Uh, one other thing which I failed to mention is that you get three magazines just like you do with your Gen 4. Another big change is in your slide release. Now, not only is it ambidextrous, they put it on the other side, but it actually comes out just a little more than your standard, uh, which you know can be a little difficult to get a hold of. It's minimal, I kind of like that, but this gets it out just a touch more, and it makes a world of difference. Now, the mag release is still only one side, but you can switch it to the other side, which a lot of guys were complaining about that, but that may change the whole configuration of the pistol. Uh, because it's set up this way. Another big change, and to me a very important change, is the trigger. Uh, it's definitely a smoother trigger. Uh, one of the things that's always been with Glock triggers is that spongy kind of bring sound. Uh, with the new trigger, definitely a more crisp and definite snap. Yes, there is some pre-travel and it starts to stack just a touch but compared to your standard Glock pistol uh, it's really excellent in fact here I have a Gen 3 you hear that echo <laughs> that's typical for Glocks I mean I've got a bunch of Glocks and that's why they all sound I, it's, it, I'm telling you guys it is a much more improved now is it fantastic uh, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Uh, it would probably keep me from running out and buying a, you know, aftermarket trigger unless I just wanted to. Now, I like aftermarket triggers, and, um, you know, I'll probably put one of the Wheaton Arms trigger sets in here. But uh, this is acceptable. I really like it much better than the standard Glock trigger from the past. Okay, we're going to check trigger pull weight. Six pounds, one ounce. Uh, that's a little bit lower than what I was getting. Pretty much I was getting just under the six and a half pound, six and a quarter uh, mark. And so that's what you're getting. I know typically Glocks have that five and a half pound trigger pull. But because it's crisp, it's not bad. Now let's take a look at reset. Right there. Not too bad. Not bad at all. Now, one improvement to me is that they beveled the front of the slide, uh, and it really looks nice. More like the G26, G27, which I've always preferred, and I think it makes the pistol look a little better. Um, here's your standard Gen 3 model. You can see that it's just cut straight off, and so this, to me, is a big improvement. Now, one thing that a lot of people have pointed out is right here at the frame, uh, the bevel doesn't match the frame, and this is true. It doesn't. Um, it kind of pokes out just a little bit. I think Glock could have done a little better job with that. I'm not really sure though how much of that could be beveled. I think just that corner if they would have pulled that down and I feel that there's enough room in there to do it. At least blend it in. Um, but you know guys honestly that is not the end of the world. But I do understand that you know it does show a little bit of lack of detail. Okay, Gen 5 over here on the left and then the Gen 4. Uh, you can see there's a definite difference between the two. Uh, this is widened out. It's got a larger gap in the back of the sight and uh, You know it just makes a big difference the front's the same, you know They're just the one dot uh, and obviously they're still polymer, but supposedly the new gen 5 has a stronger polymer A lot of guys switch those out anyway, but I've used these sights for years and they work just fine But um, you know if you want to get night sights or and they're they are offering some different night sight options uh, Which I think is pretty cool but, you know, as far as this sight, it works. It works well. But when I first got this pistol, this sight was moved far over to the right. Now, the back sight was moved over to the right. Uh, what's really funny is I've seen two other reviews 
where the exact same thing was present. Uh, I, we had a Model 17 that came in at the same time and actually its sight was lined up. So I just thought that was really kind of weird. <laughs> but it is what it is. So we're going to move this over. I mean, here we can see from the back side, it's definitely over to the right. Now, one of the big changes was they went from the three pin, as we see here in this Gen 3, to a two pin, which follows more toward the line of the Glock 43. And I think there's a lot of cues with this pistol that go with the Glock 43. We'll look at more detail on a later video, which we're going to get really down into the nitty gritty of the differences. Now, because of the lighting, you may not be able to see this as well, but the new Gen 5 slide is darker. It's more of a black color. Uh, from what I understand, they're still using the tenifer like finish on these slides, just like they do here on the Gen 4, but then they add what they call the NDLC coating, which is just a really nice finish that is diamond-like coating. <laughs> and to me, it's almost like nitride. I mean, it's a really nice, smooth finish. And it's supposed to be even more durable, and I think it's more pleasing as far as the way it looks. One thing that's big for Glock is they've gone away from their polygonal or polygonal barrel. One of the things about that is that lead could build up in the grooves and especially if you were shooting reloads or lead bullets, it could cause a catastrophic failure. They put the new Marksman barrel in here which is a standard landing grooves barrel system. And so that's going to give you more advantage and they say that it's actually more accurate. One thing they've done is a recessed crown, which to me, it kind of stabilizes the bullet, plus it keeps it from getting damaged right along the edge. I want to thank Freedom Munitions for supplying the ammo, uh, American Steel and the Pro Match. We're also shooting some Blue Lake ammo, it's their X10 9mm, and some old HPR jacketed hollow points. We're going to try some different things in here. You get a 5% discount using Suit00 when you check out at Freedom Munitions. We're also going to be using some Glock P mags and some Glock mags from ETS. One of the turning points for me in really getting turned on to this pistol was at the range. Um, I like the way it looked. It actually pretty much just looked like a regular Glock without the grooves, the finger grooves. So I wasn't all that excited about it. <clears throat> Once I got it in my hand though, one of the things is the grip just feels more ergonomic. Uh, typically the Glock is what a lot of people like to call it the block. And it is kind of thick in the hand. It's, it's definitely a little bit blocky been shooting them for years so my grip is adjusted to it and I can shoot it very well. Uh, with the magwell being flared a little bit, it kind of rides in the hand nicely, kind of nestles your hand. That's my hand. Now, I have medium sized hands. It just seems to fit really well. Uh, I can get to the mag release a little easier than I can in the previous models. Uh, with the magazines though, being able to insert them easier, uh, I really like that. And with this little lip, with it extended a little bit, I feel like I can really grab that magazine and pull it out if I need to. But one of the biggest things I think about this pistol was the trigger. You know, typically with your regular Glock triggers, it has that kind of spongy spring sound. And that's one of the things about this trigger. It's just more crisp. There's just no doubt about it. So I really prefer this trigger for sure. And of course, there are a lot of aftermarket triggers that are out there that you can put into your guns, not necessarily on the Gen 5 yet, but on the Gen 3 and 4, you know, a lot of guys have changed it. But I think there are going to be less people changing their triggers with the new Gen 5 than they would with the 3 and 4. 3 and 4, those triggers were terrible. Um, again, I was accustomed to using them, so it wasn't a huge deal to me. But I think with the new advent of a lot of these aftermarket triggers, um, I think that's one of the reasons why Glock was able to kind of crispen that up a little bit, and it's it's definitely effective. The rear sight opening up kind of changed things a little bit. It didn't seem so crowded, kind of opened up things a little bit. Now, one of the problems with that is if you're looking for really extreme accuracy, you know, there's a lot of leeway in between on that back sight. So, uh, but 
the guns seem to be fairly accurate regardless and of course Glock claims that these are this is a match barrel of course with the crown uh, crowned barrel which is going to help uh, keep that protected and kind of stabilize your bullet uh, there's just a lot of cool things about this pistol that I do like so now at the range no malfunctions I know with the original Gen 4 there had been a few uh, but with the Gen 5, it's looking really good. I mean, very reliable. I'll have to admit, I like the orange follower. Uh, it definitely signals you that the gun is unloaded. So as soon as you finish, you just look down and there you go. It's bright and orange. So I really like that feature, even though that's just a small uh, advantage with this magazine. The Glock grip has typically felt a little thick. Uh, but again, guys, without these finger grooves, it just seems to be more ergonomic. It fits my hand a little better. Uh, the flared magwell makes mag changes really quick. I like that. And again, I don't like this front part where it kind of sticks out. You could really pinch yourself if you're not careful. But all in all, guys, you, it's still a Glock. It's a Glock 19, a Glock 17. They kept the model because pretty much the design is the same. Uh, a few refinements, and which I really like some of the refinements they've added. Uh, it makes it just a little more shootable. But uh, all in all, it's again, still a Glock 19 and if you like Glocks you're gonna like this if you don't like Glocks you're not gonna like this either because it's pretty much the same pistol we're gonna disassemble the gun make sure the gun isn't loaded and so we're just gonna pull our tabs down there are some changes inside the interior of this pistol that would lend to a Gen 5 model without any of the external so uh, I think one of the big things they've done is the barrel has changed somewhat and they've gone from the standard polygonal or polygonal grooves they've gone to standard lands and grooves uh, and from what they say it makes it a lot more accurate they have retained the dual recoil spring uh, which I really like this de definitely adds in softer shooting of the pistol now we see the slide release is just a one piece deal uh, and it's actually fit through with the uh, trigger pin uh, in your locking block but um, there are some changes here we're going to sit down in fact Robbie Wheaton and I were talking about all the internal differences there are a number of things and we're not going to get into all that yet but there's a lot of cues from the Glock Model 43 and so we're going to check that out coming up very soon one change has been which probably adds a lot to the trigger pull is the firing pin safety has been beveled on either side instead of just a round smooth dome now your standard Glock model 19 barrel will fit in the gen 5 uh, and this is a Wheaton Arms threaded barrel uh, he makes really good barrels um, so it just fits well and that's one of the things that you're going to be able to change but on the model 17 the configuration is different in fact the model 17 barrel is exactly like the 19 barrel just longer so that is going to be one difference i think in the past the model 17 has been a little different so just make note of that if you're looking for an you know aftermarket barrel for your model 17 gen 5 but for the 19s you're ready to go and of course reassembly is the same as your old glock pistols <laughs> all generations now as far as pros and cons of the gen 5 uh, one of the big pros for me is the removal of the finger grooves. It just really makes the gun a lot more ergonomic. Uh, if you want to feel that hand, you have your four different backstrap options other than just the small. That's a big plus. Uh, the flared magwell, thumbs way up. That is a great plus. Uh, trigger pull is actually better. It's smoother, a little heavier, but definitely imperceivable uh, as far as just because it's so smooth. Uh, the finish on the slide which Glock pistols have always had a really good finish, but with the improvement, I think it's nice. With the sights, as far as the cut, the new cut in the rear sight, I like it. Uh, I, you know, it, it works well. Yes, I'll probably replace those with some night sights, but uh, for now, that works well. Uh, going from the polygonal grooves, I like because if I want to shoot reloads, which I typically don't, I can, but for the market itself, I think that's a big plus. You don't have to even be concerned about it. The addition of the ambidextrous slide release is a big plus, especially for those who are left-handed. And I really like the bevel right here on the slide. I think it looks nicer. It just kind of trims it in a little bit, not so blocky. So coming into that, let's look at cons. 
uh, you know, with the slide, you know, the frame doesn't really made up to that right here. Is it a big deal? I can take and just blend that in without any trouble. Uh, and, you know, it's a shame that you have to do that, really, but that's just what it is. Um, it's, it's more cosmetic than anything functional. Uh, the sight being canted far to the right, and I think Mr. Guns and Gear had one that was like that. Yankee Marshall had one that was like that. That's kind of weird because the Model 17 was lined up just perfectly when I went by Wheaton Arms to pick this one up. So I'm not really sure what's going on <laughs> with maybe their automation that or whoever's inserting these, but definitely it was just kind of funny. Of course, a couple of things that were lacking that I think would have been an improvement is maybe some front cocking serrations. Uh, that would have been nice, especially with this finish. It's a little bit slick, but not too bad and really not a deal breaker for me. I, I like the looks actually without the slide serrations. But, of course, with function, slide serrations can come in handy. Uh, other thing that I wish they would have changed maybe is the polymer sights to steel. But these have worked for years, and a lot of people use them. But, you know, I've seen problems with them, but I've seen problems with steel sights. One thing, too, which is a con, is the sharpness right here of this cut in the front of the uh, front strap. And it's kind of large. I think it may be a little bit large, and it's a little bit sharp. I'm going to end up kind of trimming that down a little bit. Another problem could be is inserting a magazine, you could possibly get pinched. So that's just one thing. I don't think it's the end of the world, but it would be nice to kind of bevel that out just a little bit. So as far as would I personally go out and buy this firearm? Absolutely. Uh, would I trade in my Gen 3 and Gen 4 for this firearm? Yes, because this gun has a lot of great features that I like. They're incremental. They're not massive changes, but what they've done with the front straps, I love that, just being gone, the finger grooves. It just gives it a really good solid feel to it. The grip feels more small, more ergonomic than the blockiness to me of the previous models. If you have bigger hands, you have four different choices. Uh, the magazine upgrades I like, uh, the, uh, just the way it feels, the smoothness, the trigger is better out of the box. Um, there are just a lot of great things that they've done to this pistol. And so, while I love my Gen 3s, I like the Gen 4s, I think the Gen 5 is going to be my new carry. And with the beveled slide not mating with the frame, and with my rear sight knocked over to the right considerably, uh, those aren't game changers for me. In fact, I really could care less. It was super easy to move that sight over. Yeah, I mean, I would like to have seen things a little more straightforward. But overall, this is going to be a great pistol, I can tell you already, and I'm just excited about getting it back out to the range. Now, whether it tops my CZ P10C, <laughs> that remains to be seen. And again, I want to give a big thanks to GunProDeals.com for sending the Gen 5 Glock. Um, you know, it really helps for me to be able to get different firearms to bring to you guys and to show you. And I really appreciate their support and help making this video possible. So check out GunProDeals.com. The prices are great and they do a lot of specials and so a great source for new firearms be strong be of good courage god bless america long live the republic There's a lot of internal things that are going on that we don't even freaking know about. <laughs> another big change is you have another big change is your slide release. And as far as the front slide mating with the frame and my sight being a little bit candid, that's no big deal to me. <laughs> and it's one of the reasons why I love working with these guys because I can bring that back to you. And it just really helps, and I really thank them, and they're really cool, and they're just really awesome. So, thumbs up, Gun Pro Deals, yeah. <laughs> really great pistols to bring to you for video. Okay, for video. Let's bring it for video. And uh, they are a major player in the world of firearms. Uh, used especially in the U.S. by the majority majority 